Hello everyone. So I do seem to have taken a much longer break from this than I expected, so I do apologise for that. Hopefully I can get the rest of this series out before life gets in the way again. Um, so as promised, um, a couple of years ago now, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're going to take a look at populating our text boxes from the database using our connection string. Um, so the code that I use to create my database in SQL Server, I will copy into the description so that you can use the same schema as me if you want to, or just you know use whatever tables you're using for this. Um, so. Um, what we need to do first is we just need to change the SQL string. So if you remember last time, we just set it up to use um, at, at version, so which is just to pull the SQL Server version um, that we are using. So what we need to do now is we want to put in the field names from the table um, that we want to get the data from. So if you recall from our form, we've just got customer ID, customer name, um, and date of birth text boxes at the minute. So we're just gonna pull those three fields from our database. Um, we can see here that that is the result of that query. So I'm just gonna copy that and just pop it here into the SQL string variable here. Um, and then I think, let's just make it really simple for now and let's just nick this code um, that we use there and let's just place it over the message box because we don't need that anymore. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, actually, we can notice here that I called my text box customer name, um, whereas in my table I've actually got two fields um, for first name and surname. Um, so I'm just going to use the first name for now um, and we will fix that later on. Um, so we just need to tell the text boxes that instead of using the set values that we set up last time, which are these hard-coded values, we want to use the fields that we're going to pull back from this query when it runs. So I'm just going to change now where we set it to 1 before. I'm going to say rs.fields and then that field is customer ID dot value and then copy and paste that customer name and date of birth there and then let's just nick these from there saves me retyping it because I can't type when people are watching <laughs> does anybody else have that problem or is it just me <laughs> um, but anyway so now we're telling the text boxes here um, to take their value from the record set um, which is going to be this result set here, which as we can see in our SQL Server window, um, that this is the result set that we're going to get back. Um, so everything else, all it's doing there, yeah, it's just going to reset it and give us a message box saying it's updated. So yeah, there, so that looks good. So I'm just going to go back here and run my form um, and press the update button. And we can see here that that has updated the values from there. We've just got the customer ID, the customer's first name only, because that's where I set it to, um, and the date of birth here, which we've got there in the table. So happy days. Um, Perfect. So I think what we're going to do next time is I'm going to show you how to do this as part of a loop instead of having to name each of the boxes in each of the fields there because when you've got a really big form um, that can be a massive pain in the ass. <laughs> so if we set it up to do, um, to do it via a loop um, it's a lot quicker and easier when we are adding new fields into forms um, and yeah. So if you found this tutorial useful, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to add any comments below and I absolutely promise that I will get the next video out shortly <laughs> and definitely not in two years time. <laughs> so thank you for watching.